After reviewing on my previous video the cards in Park on Earth Factor 2, I thought there was no better game to compare it to than Cardcraft. Cardcraft is supposedly the best carding simulator with its phenomenal graphics and its realistic physics, it really puts up a fight against card sim. Today we'll be doing a few races and try out everything that Cardcraft has to offer, so without further ado, let's get into the video and see if Cardcraft is better than card sim. Let's do this! Hello everyone and welcome back to another carding video. Now if you're interested in carding and other sim racing stuff then I think you should subscribe to my channel and ring that bell to not miss a single video. So entering the game you can already understand it's a modern game from the nice UI and very well organized menu which includes features like drive as you saw there where you can practice, set a lap time, race with other people. You can do pretty much everything. You've got the garage which pretty much shows off your vehicles, your driver, your team and your gear which is a drone and it's pretty much stuff that you can actually we will start using eventually when you upgrade the game a little bit more we get probably a sort of career mode and all that there's the shop as well and the shop is where you literally buy cards as you can see a lot of manufacturers RO, COG, Deadly, Formula K, Monaco, OK1, Praga, Sodi and obviously a generic manufacturer but you can see a lot of manufacturers in there and its manufacturer has three type of cards you've got the X30 which are like the 120cc cards the KA100 which are like the 60cc cards and then you've got also the KZ2 which are the sifter cards and uh, unfortunately you can't drive the sifter cards on a race but we're going to be talking about that even later uh, for example i can buy the praga x30 and i can do a race it's also the track sort of like what the game has to offer in terms of tracks you've got amsp geo gkcv gkcv reserve reverse ntk pfi pfi which is actually a track that also card sim offers and you've also got pfi classic which is a sort of sort of uh, like um a version of PFI and it's also the classic one so this is currently what this game has to offer in terms of tracks and it's actually a nice little variety of seven car tracks and they're all high quality and I can guarantee you that I don't know if the license kind of haven't really done a lot of research on that but they feel racer scan they are, they are absolutely insane as we're currently driving uh, the Praga X30 around PFI classic you can probably understand that this is a track that already exists on card sim but um, you can already see straight up jumping into the car the graphics are absolutely insane from from the grass from the way the car looks from the reflections there from the little dirt there as you can see on the speedometer on my wheel and I wonder how great this game will look on VR I don't own a VR yet uh, otherwise I would have would have been using it at the moment but this just this game is beautiful and in my opinion is probably one of the most beautiful games uh, racing games uh, that exist at the moment i don't care if it doesn't have all the features in the world yet but it looks beautiful acc and this game look magnificent and also ams2 has uh, some very very positives in terms of the way it looks like uh, the the sun and all these uh, beautiful weather like uh, implications that have that have been improved on ams2 but absolutely great graphics and about the car physics the car physics pretty much the x30 feels uh, very very similar to the card sim pack um they feel a lot more slidey they 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 you need to apply a sort of different driving style whereas uh seems like it's not as forgiving as uh, on card sim and it's a recurring theme with earth factor 2 where we say that you know on all sort of category of cars the driving is very forgiving you can actually slide the gt3 car and control it which is not a bad thing obviously but i think in karting cards are not very forgiving because i've driven cards and one little mistake can really spun you out like i remember one time i was driving a 120 cc and i stepped on the brakes on lap one with core tires and i completely span out immediately so Carcraft really gives me that, that sort of like uh, experience of, you know, you need to watch out. You really need to watch out what you're doing on a car, especially when it's got such high speeds like the one we're driving at the moment, which is a KZ2, a Sifter car from Saudi, if I'm not mistaken. And I have to say, beautiful, the kind of like, you need to lift off a little bit of throttle to sift up, which makes it even more immersing. 
and yeah, just uh, it feels great. It feels it feels great, especially this card. You actually can't race this uh, card on the track uh, with other like people and the AI. But what you can do actually is just what I'm doing right now: just set some laps around the track and compare yourself to the others uh, around the leaderboard. So you can still use it, and it will probably be implemented later on into the game in terms of races and all that. But for the time being. What we're going to be trying out in the races is the difficulties, the tracks, and also the two categories of cards, which are like the X30 and the KA100. So, yeah, absolutely loving uh, the hot lap. You could say that this game is great for hot lapping, and uh, yeah, you could just do that, just hot lapping. But I'm also going to be showing you the side of racing. As you can see there, first race, we're driving around PFI, the track that also exists on Card Sim. And we're driving an X30 card, a Praga 1, on medium difficulty. I decided to go medium because um, I had a bad experience from uh, back when I had the Logitech. Um, I was very bad at this game, actually. I'm still probably clumsy, but not as bad. I think I've improved as a driver overly uh, since like last year when I bought this game. So yeah, I've been an owner of this game for a year. And I have to say, I haven't really given it a huge chance. I haven't even given a chance to cards him, you know. It, it all comes down to my channel. And just uh, starting to appreciate games even more and more. Uh, as you can see, the grid is actually quite uh, short with only four uh, drivers in the race. But it doesn't really matter. Just wanted to have a quiet race on medium difficulty. And as you can see there, stuck behind that guy on first position on the sorted cards. Uh, just driving around. And also, the replay cameras have great views. Uh, that's also something I wanted to say. Some games don't really get very good don't get very good views. Uh, but this game has it all. For example, WC9 has pretty bad replay cameras to say the least but as you can see they're stuck behind him look at how close we are medium difficulty AI does seem to be slowing me down quite a bit though as you can see right there they break very early I don't know if you compare to my like performances and driving style but if you really do like feel like you're on a similar level to me then I wouldn't suggest you having medium difficulty it's not it's it's fun obviously until you overtake the guy because overtaking on this uh, game is harder than it is on card team they you can't really dive because of uh, how you're gonna lose a lot the back end when you're diving up the inside obviously you can do it and we're gonna be doing it in this video at some point <laughs> but uh, for now I just want to let you know that medium difficulty as you can see might get a little bit too frustrating you can see we're four seconds ahead of third position and just uh, being stuck uh, for the entirety of this race behind this card we get a very very good run there onto this corner and up the inside. Ah, we didn't make contact. He just, uh, we just went for the dive and he left the space there because he didn't want to make contact. But I guess on the higher difficulty levels, this is not going to be possible because uh, they're going to be much more aggressive and they will probably turn into you. But we're going to be trying it very, very soon. So this was PFI. This was the X30 card uh, of Praga. Obviously, all manufacturers pretty much are the same. It's not really. It's just about the skins, I think. But either way. Phenomenal race, very good. Loads of fun, obviously. Staying behind that guy. I actually couldn't overtake him. I might have been faster than him around like a lot of seconds, but at the end of the day, I couldn't overtake him. These are also some animations you can see right there because we won the race, blah, 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 all that beautiful stuff. And now we're going to be moving into another race. Second race, this one around AMSP, which is uh, Atlanta Motorsport Park. And this. Uh, track as you can see I'm already getting spun out you might be wondering what is going on why is that so, so aggressive all of a sudden well this is actually adaptive difficulty and we're driving the KA 100 cards a card that I've never driven in my life on this game and a difficulty that I suggest you not trying it I was uh, jumping into this difficulty with the hopes that it was going to be something that was going to adapt to my driving skills as the race as the race goes on Unfortunately, it's not that. It's probably even harder than hard and legendary experience. I don't know how the final difficulty is named. This is harder than that. And it's also, as you, as you saw at the beginning, I had a lot of issues with uh, other drivers spunning me out. I'm not saying I was the slowest of all in this race, but you can already see we've got a nine second gap from the lead. Uh, another, like, another cards behind me that are a lot of seconds behind. And I've got only like one car trying to overtake me pretty much. And it just didn't really make sense. As for the overall feeling of these cards, um, they feel weird for me again. 
I tend to enjoy the 120cc cards a lot more. This felt okay, but you have to apply a completely different like driving style again in order to reland the whole feeling of these cards and just uh, you know enjoy them to the fullest. But for me, this X30 cards absolutely great <laughs> in all in all the sense. But either way, as you can see, moved on to the third race around Gill. This is I think an Australian track, and I tend to actually enjoy these tracks very very much as you can see getting spun again for anyone wondering this is not adaptive this is hard difficulty and you can see when I literally like put a lot more cards in the race currently we have 10 cards you can see the AI is a bit of a mess it doesn't really give you a lot of space it doesn't really care about you when you're trying to go for a move the break on occasions that you wouldn't expect them to break and sometimes you're just gonna hit them at the back and that could actually spin you out or you could spin one of the AI drivers which you probably don't want to do, you just want to have fun racing and it's something that doesn't happen in Nerf Factor 2 which probably makes the racing on cards seem a little bit better um, as for the overall feeling I've already been telling you it's great like the physics are different to cards team but by no means they are worse <laughs> there's no chance I could call these physics worse or I could call them better, but I'm just not very, very sure. Like, I'm gonna probably leave it up to you to decide, boys. They're both brilliant games so far, uh, as, as, as far as I'm concerned. But overall, the racing, because of how the AI actually faces you in the track, might be a little bit worse on this game. And it's a bit sad, because it has the possibility of, like, being perfect in terms of racing and I feel like they will be fixing it it's something that is fixable like the main core of this game is good and they just need to fix the details here and there crossing the finish line how difficulty actually wasn't that hard I'm gonna say it felt good and I felt like if I knew the track a little bit better and had some practice in it it probably would have been even better and I could have won that race but I'm now on PFI Classic to show you also this little nice, uh, you know, layout of PFI, which is not available on cards. As you can see, up the inside, oh god, we make a lot of contact with that Saudi card there. That was a bit unprofessional by me, but we're on hard difficulty. You gotta do that if you want to win a race. And yeah, I wanted to actually try out hard difficulty around a track that I'm very well experienced. I know it very well, you know. I wanted to give that a sort and see if I can beat the hard difficulty as we onto the grass. And we're gonna be coming back into the track. Nice and easy there. We didn't actually spawn. That was very, very weird. But grass physics, good. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's see if we can actually have a very good exit there onto the final corner. As we gain third position, we're going to stick behind our Monaco cards. And probably around the outside. Very weird driving from the ARs. We already are gaining the lead there. They feel very, very slow around a few corners. So inconsistency. Um, with the difficulty on different tracks so hard difficulty on Gill was very very not very hard but you had to actually pick up the pace to try and fight and gain some positions hard difficulty on BFI Classic they really break on weird um, positions or I, I, I doubt it's just the fact that I'm experienced around this track it's probably the fact that the AI might be inconsistent depending on the track you are at but yeah, doesn't really make sense to me. Hopefully they fix it in the future. So these are like the small little details that I was talking about. Generally speaking, the game is great. Obviously the development time of it is um, fairly slow because they're not a huge development team. But they're honestly doing an awesome job with what they have at the moment. This is probably the best karting simulator. If they fix uh, the racing with the AI and also implement the online gameplay, this could end up being probably the best karting game. But for the time being, I think Card Sim wins the race based on uh, how you're racing. But you've also got to take into consideration the prices of the game. But uh, either way, won another race, uh, as you can see. And we were actually three seconds faster than the hard difficulty AI. No setup or anything like that. Just pay attention to the stats. That was crazy. Probably I should have tried, experienced all the legendary difficulty. I don't know how it's called around this track. But. Uh, yeah, let's uh, jump into my conclusion, which is that overly, Cardcraft is a wonderful game, coming at a very reasonable price in comparison to the cards in pack, and that reasonable price is actually only 18 euros. Yes, you've heard that right, seven tracks, a lot of car manufacturers, three card models, only for 17, uh, I think 18 actually euros. So, without missing as well too much on quality, because the quality of the content on this game is great. 
Also, the amount of content, for, in my opinion, is enough for someone to have fun, and the quality of them is very high, as I've already said. The physics are such that I keep making you come back to the game, wanting to become better and set a better lap time. The game is still under development, obviously. There's gonna be the implementation of online, and when the online mode exits the beta phase, it will be something that will attract even more people in the game, making it an even more enjoyable experience. And yeah, this is just gonna make Cardcraft a game that is probably 100% worth your money because it's a game that the developers love and they saw it with the constant like communication with uh, the fan base, the, the player base of this game and always like pushing updates as fast as they can. And yeah, they love the game and they want you to love it as well. So that was the video for today, guys. If you enjoyed, smash the like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and ring that bell to not miss any future videos of the channel. Follow me on Twitter, join my Discord server if you want to chat and chill with me. And until next video, boys, which is going to be a short video against uh, of a comparison of Card Sim uh, versus Carcraft, I'll catch you later. Goodbye.